Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Start this off with grief is the worst. It's bad. It hurts. And it's never, ever going away. Remember, like we talked about in my last video, grief is going to stay the same size and our world can build around it. But it's the worst. You guys, if you appreciate this content, I'd appreciate if you click the like and the subscribe buttons down below um, in hopes that this reaches other people that are looking for a community or looking for a place to not feel alone. Okay, so if you do that, that'd be awesome. And let's get into this. My grief is the worst. And for me, my grief is worse than yours. Which sounds selfish, but I also know that your grief is worse than mine and worse than anybody else's. Because when you suffer a loss, when you suffer the loss of someone you absolutely love, absolutely adore, doesn't matter who it is if they were close to you and you love them deeply and you lose them your world's been broken 100% broken and there is nobody in this world that can change the fact that your grief is the worst <clears throat> our culture around illness, around death, around grief is one of healing and fixing and treating. It's not understanding and patience and kindness and love. And that's changing. I know that's changing because in this community, in the Pog family community, you are all so understanding. But in the general public, it's all taboo. It's all things that we don't talk about, right? We don't talk about death. We don't talk about grief and loss. We all expect that we're not going to have that. I didn't expect to have this loss. Even in the last two months, I didn't expect to have this loss. I didn't want to have this loss, obviously. But it happens. Illness, murder, suicide, accidents. It happens, <clears throat> whether we want it to or not. And when it happens... Everything breaks. And people that haven't felt that break, that significant loss, don't understand. And it's okay to some extent that they don't. But it's also sad because as a culture... We avoid the idea of loss and death. And so when people are going through it, there is a large chunk of our population that think it can be healed and that it can be treated and that we should just get back and that there's a time frame. I mean, look at the stages of grief, right? You've got these stages of grief laid out in a way that by the end stage, you're done. The idea that it can be treated. And even a lot of us in the community, in the Pog family community, refer to those stages of grief. And I think of them and I consider them and I consider the emotions that go with them. But it's linear. Right? The, the, it's, it's linear. 
And so for me, grief is not, it's, it's everywhere. Just like our mind. When we have that significant loss, we break. Our memory breaks. Our attention span breaks. Our will to do things that we used to love break. But our willingness to do new things may have changed as well. Um, it's kind of like side effects of medicine, grief is. Um, some people won't sleep because of whatever medicine. While other people will sleep all the time. Grief's kind of the same way. Um, you may gain anxiety, you may not, you may this, you may not. It's just a, it's so individual. But our culture has been taught that we need to treat anything that doesn't allow us to be happy. And so when you try to treat grief, it actually hurts grief when you try to treat it based on norms like the idea that there's a timeline or that getting back to work will help you be normal again um, the idea of normal even the new normal kind of triggers me a bit because I don't believe that anything is ever normal and whatever is socially norm I try to step outside of and I'm glad I do, because if Sarah and I didn't do that, we wouldn't have these videos, and we wouldn't be trying to help a huge community. So, getting back to normal is never going to happen. I don't want to. Uh, somebody, somebody asked in one of the comments, and intent, intent is good, but somebody asked, like, why in some of these vlogs I'm really not talking about Sarah? And it's, it's an interesting question because when I talk about anything, in my mind, it's all Sarah. This wisteria is here because of Sarah. This garden is here because of Sarah. Um... <laughs> My house is Sarah. My kids are Sarah. My yard is Sarah. My car is Sarah. The music I listen to is Sarah. Everything I do has a component of Sarah. And so about a week ago, I decided to cut everybody off from my Sarah. And I say my Sarah because it's my experiences, my memories, my dreams, my hopes, my goals, my pictures, my videos, my audio, my, my Sarah. Okay. Teresa has her Sarah and she's sharing her Sarah. Jared has his Sarah. Our parents have their Sarah. But what I found was happening is it hurt so much because people kept asking me to dig into my Sarah and share my Sarah. And it hurt. Uh, I was forcing myself to go through thousands of photos, for example. And it hurt. It created this, like, longing too soon. Um, this need this anger that Sarah's not here and and I was pushing myself to do this for other people they didn't understand that my grief was worse than theirs and that their grief is worse than mine they got that and that's okay but they needed something from me that I wasn't ready to give and it, and I allowed it for a good amount of time, and it hurt so much. And it wasn't worth it. It wasn't, it wasn't helpful for me. And it would have, wouldn't, I don't think hurt anybody for it to have waited. So, it's it's a weird concept. But the point of the story is, at that point, I I 
I decided to take a break from giving other people my Sarah. I didn't even realize it, but unintentionally, um, that transferred to videos as well, to, to my recordings. And, and so I guess the point is that everything that I do has a component of Sarah. Every word that I say is related to Sarah, especially in these vlogs. Um, but when we are grieving a loss so significant, we've got to be able to decide on our own boundaries that we need in order to survive the loss, to grow a world around the loss, and to, it's, it's okay for us to set limits on how we expose ourselves to that loss. It's a significant trauma losing people. And when you repeat the trauma over and over and over and over and over, it does do damage. It does hurt internally more and more. And at that point, going through thousands of pictures was damaging. She's beautiful and I love looking at her pictures, but it at the time was increasing this hole in my heart. And with that said, a couple days ago in our Discord server, I was editing a video live so people could kind of see the process, one of our acts of kindness videos. And we went down these rabbit holes that were absolutely beautiful and fun where I was choosing to go into our Google Photos and show pictures of Sarah or show videos or we were looking at some old gaming streams and with Sarah and 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 that was beautiful and gorgeous and it felt good. Um, and so it's a matter of kind of doing it on our own terms. And it's also a matter of our culture has taught us not to understand the limits that grief put on us. And those limits, those boundaries are different because it's an individual journey. People that have had a significant loss, especially if it's a similar loss, are gonna understand it better. A mother losing her child isn't gonna necessarily understand a husband losing his wife. And he's not gonna understand a mother losing their child. Like, we understand feels that come with it. But that significant loss is so very different so very different. We're able to connect because grief is grief and all of our griefs are different. And we're able to understand at the same time some of those normal phrases that are empty or mistaught, you know, like, well, when are you getting back to work? <laughs> Why don't you do the hobbies that you always enjoyed? Um, <laughs> we can connect on those things, but we'll never really truly understand each other's grief. I think the closest we'll get to that is if we are grieving a similar type of loss. I think widows tend to understand each other's grief um, in, a, in a different way. Whereas parents that have lost a child, they tend to understand grief in a different way. Children that have lost a parent, they understand it in a different way. And yet we're all here to try and support each other in our different ways. Man, grief's the worst, you guys. 
Um, for me and my family, we're trying to do positive things to build around our grief, to build our world. Um, but it's not going to go away. It's always going to be there. And it's always going to be bad, and it's always going to be the worst. And we are going to do our best. And we are also promising to do our best to understand that everybody's grief is the worst to them. And we want to be here to support you guys through it all. Grief sucks, man. It really does. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate you all very, very much. You're wonderful. I hope you have a wonderful day, morning, night, wherever you are. And in the words of my beautiful Sarah, be kind and make good choices. I don't know where I put my remote. There it is. 